Hey guys, welcome to another video here, learning by doing. We're in Banda. It's a tiny little group of islands in the middle of the Banda Sea, about uh, 200 miles sort of from anywhere. Pretty much in the middle of nowhere, to be honest. And it's pretty amazing. This thing behind me here is a volcano called Gunung Api, and then Banda Naira is over here to the other side. And uh, we've been exploring it for a few days now, and yeah, we're sort of yeah, it's another one of those places we've fallen in love with very very different than the last place we were at and just again like we've been around Indonesia for a couple of three four years now but it just still blows us away that you sail for a couple of days and it's just like another country totally different languages different customs different cultures different looking people even and uh, yeah pretty amazing so yeah today we're going to show you uh, some pretty cool plastic recycling initiatives they've got here on the island it's really um interesting and you know obviously we've talked in the past about plastic issues in Indonesia here's an island that is actually doing something about it uh, that's a really interesting thing we go for snorkel out behind there there's a lava flow off the back of this volcano and it's caused this pretty cool coral beds to grow so we'll go and show you that and uh, yeah we had some couple of rough nights here with a bit of extra wind and it was blowing us around there and these boats were banging on us and so yeah we sort of show you how we're trying to figure out the ropes and everything to to make us secure here so now we are in Banda for more than a week and in the main uh, streets we can see many products from nutmeg they dry them with sugar they put uh, they do some jam some syrup some uh, coffee with spices inside too they have also cinnamon and canary nuts so today we're gonna visit the plantation because we are quite curious about how they grow these nutmegs Okay, so we came over by boat to uh, Banda Basar, which means big. It's a big island here. And today we have Lukman is guiding us. He's a historian and has his own YouTube channel. There's a link up here. You can have a look. He's made some history videos about this amazing area. Good morning, Lukman. Good morning. What is this bloodstone? Um, the bloodstone. It's the bloodstone because, you know, it's a hat. Ah. Uh, this, this, this stone. So this stone oh. is full of blood yeah. all around. Yeah. So then it's the blood of stone. Blood stone. Wow. It is the last uh, nutmeg plantation from the Dutch era. And thus the new plantation have a different way of putting the trees or harvest? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's a diff different uh, concept here because before and the bill is the canary and the nutmeg. So is the canary tree is protecting the nutmeg from the direct sunlight and then um, So we're in the nutmeg plantation now but it's just as much an almond plantation. So that massive tree I just showed you, that's called a Dutch almond. And uh, yeah, it's just a different sort of almond. They call it canary nut here. And you can find it in the shops. It's all, um, you know, you can find these nuts. They're huge trees, they're over 200 years old. And they're actually planted here. They were brought by the Dutch 
and all under them, all of these other trees around here are all nutmeg and that's the real value crop. But the canary trees sort of shelter the, the nutmeg from storms and direct sunlight, so that's why they planted them here, but they're amazing trees, huge. Smelling better when it's fresh for me to not make than when it's dry. I quite like like this. So it's the first time I'm seeing a, a cinnamon tree, and so they are using the bark. That's really the powder we have in Europe. And even the leaves, like when you pick the leaves and you smell it, it's really you can recognize even more the essential oil of a cinnamon than really the powder we can find in Europe. It's super strong smell. Shrooms. So we're standing on top of the Hollandia Fort, uh, one of 12 forts that are around these islands here. And yeah, look at this view. This is. You said the last time the volcano erupted? Gunung Api. Last time erupted 1988. Wow, what a view. We did a lot of motorbike tours, right? As we'd rented motorbikes for the whole day, we decided to just do a whole lap of, of Banda Bissar. It's about a 20 kilometer loop. And uh, Lookman said there were some pretty cool things to see around the place. And, and how you know us from other videos, we just love cruising around motorbikes. and. Uh, just stopping in random places and seeing what we see and uh, yeah that worked out again we saw a couple of pretty cool forts so now we are in another fort called Concordia Fort in another part of the island And we sort of just rode into the middle of this wedding that was going on and uh, worked out to be pretty cool. Out the front were just, you know, 50 men sitting around smoking, listening to Indo pop music. Yeah, at the back, all the women were cooking and making coffee and stuff like that, but they had a traditional music uh, drums and I think it's called Gong Sembalan, Nine Bells or something like that. And uh, really cool to watch them. They just like going off and having turns and each song lasts about 15 minutes, but they just sort of take turns and have a bit of a rest and the women were loving it. And that was actually the, where the party was at. Marie had a nice little dance and uh, that was real cool to see.
Yeah, I kept driving around after that. It was it's awesome. Just beautiful roads actually, but really narrow and lots of people working in the nutmeg plantations all over the place. And uh, one of the most peaceful and beautiful islands we've, we've ever visited, to be honest. Everywhere you go there's cloves and nutmeg and cinnamon and spices of all sorts just drying on the lawns and on the side of the roads of people's houses because they've just up in the woods, up in the forest all day picking them and yeah they spread them out on tarps and blankets when it's good weather and dry them out and the smell is pretty amazing as you're cruising along on your motorbike it's just these different, oh there's cloves, there's cinnamon, it's, it's pretty amazing and it's uh, really a, a special um, experience for sure. So we've done the circle around the island now and Lukman took us to his other family house here and here all the ladies are cooking and baking and weaving and all sorts of things and we're getting to taste all their goodies. Yeah, we Each one tastes the same, each yeah. colour or different? No, it's the same, just different colour. Yeah? The taste is the same. Oh, like chips. Mm. Enough. Mm. Enough. Mm. 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 Coconut. I like the peanut one better. Mm. Mm. Of course they wouldn't let us leave without a big packet of all of the different stuff that they made. And believe me, I enjoyed it the next few days on the boat. Hi guys, we're here in Bandanaira and we've come across this awesome um, project that's dealing with the waste management here. As you've seen in previous videos, there are huge problems with plastic and waste management in general in Indonesia. Obviously the packaging and all this, the locals are just using plastic more and more but there's no infrastructure to, to deal with that and so it ends up in the ocean or in the jungle or mostly in the rivers and then in the ocean. But So these guys here have actually come up with a, a good project that deals with it and not just, you know, roughly, they really have an end goal on this. So I'd like to show you their project and we're here in their recycling hall right now and we're going to show you around what they actually do. My name is Marika. Um, I'm living in Banda since 2015. I'm co-founder of Banda Scene and of uh, the Yaya Sons or the Luminotion Foundation, the local foundation that we have here in order to conduct waste management and education about environmental issues. Hello, my name is Maga. Uh, I work with Marika. Uh, we work hard for the fix the problem of the plastic in Banda New York. So the foundation employs 16 people permanently. There are people who are collecting the trash out of the cans that are, that are around the city. There are a couple of people on a boat who haul stuff out of the water and off the beaches, but also collect rubbish from other outlying islands. There are a bunch of guys here in the workshop that are collecting and sorting and um, grinding up the, the plastic that's been already collected. And yeah, so it's a pretty good organization. The, um, some of this plastic gets shredded, as you see here, and sent to Surabaya, and they're actually buying that in Surabaya, so they get money back for that. Um, and some of the trash here is really sorted, and the, there's ladies on the island who, who weave it into baskets and make other products, and that's sold in Germany and uh, other places in Europe and here on the island. And then the certain sorts of plastic gets put in this paralysis machine and actually turned into diesel and petrol and kerosene uh, for use in cars and boats and uh, other things like that. So here they've got a pyrolysis machine. This is a machine that turns used plastic into diesel, petrol and kerosene. So tell us how this, this all works. Yeah, so uh, the plastic sorts you can put in is uh, polypropylene and polyethylene and uh, they are heated up without oxygen. So they're, they're not burning but instead they evaporate. 
and then condensate again. So you get a crude oil and this oil gets distilled and then becomes, depending on the temperature, becomes diesel, benzene or kerosene. And so what's the, what's the payback on that? If you've got 10 kilos of polypropylene oil bottles, uh, what do you get back from that? From 10 kilos of plastic you get 5 litres of diesel normally, 2 litres of benzene and 1.5 and litres of kerosene. And the kerosene is enough to, to run the entire process. Really. As you've seen, there are plenty of forts all around the islands of Banda. They're mostly built by the Dutch to protect their investment in the nutmeg industry. Um, the two main ones on Banda Naira itself are Fort Belgica and Fort Nassau. Belgica is the massive one up on the, the hill. It was first built in 1611, uh, a very small fort, and the one you see here was finished in um, 1673. And it was lost to the British, then re-given to the Dutch, and then lost to the British again. So yeah, like most things, it's been battled over. But yeah, pretty interesting to walk around these places. Um, fort Belgica has been restored fully in 1991, I think. And um, it's possible to walk around the entire thing, climb all the towers, and you get an amazing view from up there. And really cool to imagine how they would have lived back then in this, in this colossus. The smaller one down the bottom of the hill is Fort Nassau, and this construction was completed in 1609, so it's one of the very early ones. So I'm going to show you a little bit our anchoring situation here in Banda. It's very, very deep here. Basically, it's just volcanoes that go, keep going down underwater, so it's just this slope. You can't really anchor on them, so what we've had to do is put the anchor out in 30-something metres and then just reverse in as close as we can to the land and tie up on the trees. But yeah, with three boats sort of in this little corner here and, and uh, the wind sort of whips around on the volcano here and so everyone's sort of tin pin bowling off each other like we've got all got fenders out. We're sort of waking up in the middle of the night when a squall hits and we start dancing around and hoping we're not going to hit the other boats and I'm continually like re-tying ropes and you know trying to get things working but it's a bit of stress always. Okay. I'm going to go over and tighten up the rope on this middle boat. He's floating around and bonking into us, so I'm going to go and do that. But first, I've got to empty out the dinghy. Look, this is, this is the rain from last night. So it's actually not just rain. It's probably some rain, but I forgot to put the bung in. Yeah, that happens sometimes too. been saying lately that uh, my hair is getting a bit out of control so Danny here said we have to go now 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 and he's got a friend that's gonna cut it <laughs> true yes we're going to very fast 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 cutting hair cutting hair every every hair <laughs> Yadi hello the master hair cutter. I'm gonna look 25 years younger and way more handsome. Basically just completely different. Well, the idea is super fast. Like literally three minutes, I think. And look, told you, 25 years younger. <laughs> oh, what do you think about my haircut? Oh, huh. you're like a businessman. Yeah, yeah, good, eh? Like yes. 20 years younger. Yeah. 
23. What do you think? You're really more beautiful. <laughs> You're just saying that because you have to? Right guys, hope you enjoyed that video. We had a blast here in Banda. Uh, really, really cool place. I mean, you know, I've probably said that a lot of times, but we're actually having a blast all these places around Indonesia. All so different, all so unique. Uh, we hope we're bringing that to you properly. I mean, I guess you guys are getting that, right? We've been in one country now for what, three and a half years. But it's just, there's so much to see here. And every time we think, oh, we know how it all works, we go somewhere else and it's just different and the people are different and there's a different history, a different culture. It's amazing. It's really amazing. Um, yeah, had a blast here. As I said, we're off to Tuval, Kai Islands tomorrow morning. And uh, I'm about to jump in the water to give the bottom a bit of a scratch so we can glide along at a good speed. I don't think there's going to be too much wind tomorrow, so we want to at least glide as fast as we can. So, um, yeah, I'll show you how this uh, bottom paint's looking now too. I think it's been about five or six weeks since I last cleaned it. I'm only scraping it using uh, this sort of thing, because if I use a, a brush or the sponge, it just takes all the paint off, because this hard anti foul from International is not at all hard, it's just soft. Uh, yeah it's just a cloud of blue if you touch it so anyway i'll show you how how that's looking after six weeks of being in the water and uh yeah thanks to all the um patrons once again amazing that you guys are willing to uh flow us some money for making these videos and for helping it us up and for helping us out uh you know on our little journey here it's pretty pretty amazing oh yeah well i'm looking it's not that i've been here in a muslim town so long that i'm covering my hair up um, I'm expecting to be a lot of shells and and actual not just slime on the bottom of the um, boat here so there'll probably be a lot of sea lice and little crabs and that I don't want them to go in my ears or you know start biting me on the scalp so I'm just covering up a little bit like long sleeves and and this and I'll put a mask on here obviously but yeah patrons you guys are awesome it's really really cool to hear from you guys as well and PayPal obviously often forget you guys but very nice little presents that just come in unexpectedly so really really cool amazing uh, sort of what I expected to be honest but for an anti-foul that has been in the water since late May uh, and cleaned like three times 
and on the move we've done 1500 miles since we put it in and normally in small jumps so yeah that's not what you'd expect from an anti fell and uh, that's not taking into regard that it's not even hard you know it's just soft so it's not really working as an anti fell at all obviously I did a whole video about this there's a link up in the corner but as an update to that I still haven't heard anything back from International since I sent them a paint sample a couple of months ago now so I haven't heard anything back from them I will be hauling out again in Sarong uh, probably in late February and then yeah I'll just have to scrub all this off go back to scratch and uh, see what I'm going to do regarding what sort of paint I'm going to use or if International come to the table with any sort of a deal for me I don't know we'll see anyway but that's further down the track anyway pretty disappointing to see this yeah I just could have saved myself a lot of work and money and effort and just not changed my anti just left my old one on it to be honest but anyway we'll spend a couple more hours scratching this off now see you next time